Right, 2011 and later, we replaced the front brakes. We talk about rotors, pad and slide pins in the Jeep Grand Cherokee. A quick overview. We remove the wheel, then we remove the caliper and the pads, remove the rotor, clean all the parts, and then we put everything back together. The brake pads are in here, two of them. We have slider pins, two of those, top and bottom. We have the caliper piston that needs to be pushed back and it will flush the old brake fluid up into the master cylinder and the ABS system and all that. So that's why it's good to have the brake fluid changed before we do this. And as a precaution, we take the speed sensor wire off out of those guides here so that we don't pull on it when we move the calipers to the side. I'm going to show quick the master cylinder, I want to say, the uh, reservoir here. We can open this and see if it's full already. If so, we can remove some of the fluid so when we push the caliper back that it doesn't overflow. The anti-rattle spring we remove first and then there is uh, slide pin dust caps on those rubber things, it's all rubber here, plastic and rubber, so you can remove those, there's two of them, one on top, one on the bottom, get those out of the way. Now if it's a OEM car you need an 11mm hex driver to get those out. Uh, if they were ever replaced, those pins, it may be a different size. And I uh, ordered new ones, so I use new ones, I don't reuse the old ones. They are too corroded for me. I'm not in the mood to clean them, you could. So, you do this by hand. The last bit there, you can just pull them out, hopefully. If you can't pull them out, then they are too rotten anyway. You see that? Corrosion. That's bad. Okay, that's why I got new ones. See, there is a new one here in the bag. Okay, there is one on the bottom. Take that one out too. I uh, talk about the torque specs when we put the new ones in. This one too, I'm able to remove by hand. It's still corroded. There you can see how corroded it is. Corrosion is bad on those. Don't like it. And then we could take the caliper off, put it on the side here on my bucket. It's a heavy bucket that doesn't fall over. So uh, it's a very good workbench basically for my caliper without pulling on the hose. The bike line. Okay, here's the old pad. If your rotor looks good on the outside, it doesn't mean it's good on the inside. So before you check your brakes, make sure they are good on both sides. Okay, so the adapter bolts I have to remove. There's two of them. There's one. Get that one out. And then one on the bottom here. We will reuse those. There we go. And then we can take the adapter bracket. This one is also corroded. And let's take a look at it. We have here those areas where the pads are sliding on. That's where we need to clean and put anti-seize on there. There is a rubber seal that keeps the new rotor from falling off. That rubber seal we need to remove and we can reuse that later when we clean it. There we go. And I use a puller and I showed all this to you in slow motion how that worked out. Just pulled on it nicely and comes off. Uh, if you use a hammer you may damage the bearings 
this method you don't so this is how you're supposed to take it off all right here's the hub that needs to be super clean especially the area where you have the contact between rotor and the hub uh, otherwise this whole thing could wobble later I use a steel brush to do that and then the next parent is to clean those pins the slider pin bushings and it's not only the slider pin it's also the bushings and the holes in here <coughs> it corrodes internally and it puts pressure on the rubber and there you see that it uh, really builds up corrosion and the corrosion pushes on those rubber bushings here and they become too tight for the pin to slide back and forth so I use a lot of sandpaper to get those clean in there I have like a sandpaper attachment on my little Dremel and I Dremel that out and it gets a lot of loop in there so that it doesn't rust again there needs to be enough space if you put the new ones in and the slider still is too tight then you need to grind that more open there the hole make it wider so that they slide in and out easy the new uh, rubber grommets here I also lube a lot and then we make sure they sit right I have like this little tool here to get it uh, into the seat nice and easy both sides and before you take them off you memorize in what direction they go in that is super helpful and it, when I insert the pins they, I loop them also extremely like a lot of loop in there to make them slide back and forth very easy, easy. makes sense to use new parts if you don't want to clean for a while you can send the other ones the old ones um, I use new ones because I have already the thread locker on there now before I put the new rotors on I put a lot of anti-seize on there it may be a little too much it has to be thin on there not too thick Get my new rotor on and avoid to touch the areas where you break with this grease on your fingers then we put the rubber ring back on there and that makes the this stick there doesn't fall off anymore nice here's my adapter bolt on the left and the clean uh, adapter there with uh, anti-seize on it and we install this thing first those bolts have a torque spec of 200 newton meters up front here we are doing the front brakes if you do the rear brakes in the rear it's less so you need to be aware of that we have different torque specs make it click all right 200 newton meters on those now we insert the new brake pad and here the one on the caliper side are the same the right and left side of the car I just need two hands to put them in and they have a wear indicator the outer ones and they are different from left to right so the steel spring here is supposed to be on the bottom there we go and then we just put the caliper back on and we tighten the caliper bolts to the specifications the front brake it's 55 newton meters in case you do the rear brakes it's less be aware of that okay now we need to get the hardware on there the rattle clips okay and we don't forget to put the dust caps in here on both of those so that we don't get corrosion on those bolts and then the speed sensor wire we need to plug back into our clips here and that's it we do this on both sides put the wheels back on and pump the brakes 
pump it, my friends, before you start driving, and then you should be good.